Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Italian white bean and sausage stew. That's right, every once in a while there comes along a soup that is so comforting, so substantial, and so satisfying that it becomes known as a stew. And while it is true the rules and regulations for whether to name something a stew or a soup are pretty casual and vague, the point is this soup, as the old commercial goes, eats like a meal. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. And what we'll want to do the night before we're going to make this is soak some dry cannellini beans overnight in a whole bunch of cold, fresh water. And this is what mine looked like the next morning. And of course, we could make this with a couple cans of beans, but this takes almost no effort. And not only do these come out better, but they are way, way, way less expensive to use, which is nice when you're saving up to buy $15 face masks. But anyway, once our beans are set, we can move on to erasing the casing on some Italian sausage. And to do that, all we have to do is make one cut down the center, and then we'll simply peel that casing off. So I did that to all four. And if you need someone to tell you, you can use any sausage you want. I just did. But a nice sweet Italian sausage containing lots of garlic and fennel is a great choice. And then what we'll do is go ahead and transfer those into a dry soup pot that we've set over medium high heat. And we'll go ahead and brown that sausage up, while at the same time breaking it up into some nice small pieces. And of course, exactly how small is going to be up to you. But something that fits comfortably on a spoon would be a pretty good approach. And by using a dry pan here, some of those meat juices are going to stick to and start caramelizing on the bottom, creating what we call in the business a fond, F-O-N-D. And that's going to add some beautiful color to our stew and also an extra level of flavor. But anyway, once our sausage has been broken up and we've started to form a decent fond on the bottom, we'll go ahead and toss in some diced onion. And we'll cook that stirring for about five minutes or until the onions start to soften and turn translucent. And even though we haven't added any oil yet, just enough fat should have rendered out of that sausage to coat and cook these onions beautifully. Oh, and if you want, you can add some garlic here, but my sausage was pretty garlicky, so I didn't. But anyway, like I said, we'll cook those onions for about five minutes. And as we do that, caramelized fond at the bottom of the pan is gonna get nicer and nicer. And then what we'll do to release all that goodness is once we think our onions have gone long enough, is we'll go ahead and splash in some white wine, which is gonna deglaze all that caramelization off the bottom. And if you don't have wine around, you can just dilute some wine vinegar with a little water and use that. Or if times are really tough, you can just use a splash of water. So we'll go ahead and stir in that wine. And we can also at this time toss in some freshly ground black pepper, a nice big pinch of red chili flakes, and one bay leaf, which is pretty much mandatory for any bean dish. And at this point, we will also add somewhere between six and eight cups of water. And the reason I say six to eight is because that's gonna depend on how thick you want this. And yes, of course, we can always adjust later and add more. And in case you're keeping score at home, I added about seven and a half. But anyway, we'll stir that in and then do two things. We'll go ahead and add our soaked beans, which of course we've drained. And we will also crank our heat up to high because we wanna bring this up to a boil. And as this starts to bubble, you're gonna notice a foam come to the top which a lot of people insist you skim off. And sometimes I do, but I usually don't, since I'm pretty sure those are just proteins foaming up. But one thing we do have to do once it starts boiling is reduce our heat down to medium low, at which point we'll simply simmer this for about an hour or so, or until our beans are tender. And then what I like to do at about the 30 minute mark is go ahead and add our salt. And there's different schools of thought when it comes to salting beans while they cook. Okay, some people say don't do it until the end, because they believe it makes the beans tough, whereas other people add it right at the beginning and don't believe it makes a difference and think those other people are crazy. And then there's people like me who split the difference and add the salt about halfway through, which I've always found works out nicely. And that's it, once my beans were salted, I continued cooking on for another 30 minutes or so, or until my beans were perfectly tender. And how I knew for sure is I gave them a taste. All right, there's no guessing in the kitchen, so make sure you give them a try. And if they are tender, what I like to do at this point is take a potato masher and smash about 20 to 25% of the beans, which is gonna give our stew just a little bit of a creamier texture. Okay, so that's optional, but I do recommend it. But regardless of whether you do that or not, once our beans are tender, we will add the last major ingredient, three or four nice big handfuls of some chopped greens, which in my case was some dino kale, but Swiss chard would also work beautifully, or something like mustard greens, or even some stinging nettles if you can find them. And what we'll do is stir those in and raise our heat to medium, and then simply cook this until our greens are tender, which for me was about 15 minutes or so. 
And of course, that's going to depend on exactly which green you used. All right, if you went with something tender like spinach, that's only going to take a couple minutes. So you will have to figure that out. I mean, you are after all the Mr. Green genes of your sausage, beans, and greens. But you'll know because you'll be tasting and checking along the way. And at some point, you'll say to yourself, you know what, these greens are tender. And then once they are, we only have one thing left to do. And that is make sure we taste this and see if it has enough salt, which it almost never does. And if it needs more, of course, we will adjust. And that's it. Once we're happy with how it's looking, tasting, and feeling, we'll go ahead and find an appropriately sized and shaped bowl, and we will serve that up piping hot. Oh, and one major thing that's missing in this shot, a big old hunk of crusty Italian bread, or right, preferably that you baked yourself. That really does complete this whole experience. And then to finish this, I like to drizzle over some extra virgin olive oil, which is optional, but also mandatory. And I would say the same thing about a little grating of Parmigiano Reggiano, or in my case, Pecorino. And then last but not least, a few more chili flakes, just to stay in shape. And that's it, our Italian white bean and sausage soup, which is so good we're calling a stew, is done. So let me go ahead and grab a spoon and stir in that cheese, and then dig in. And that, my friends, is just one of the greatest and most delicious ways to eat beans ever invented. Okay, this is the kind of food that warms you from the inside out. And while it's very rich and satisfying and borderline decadent, and certainly not low calorie, it is also incredibly nutritious. And I think safe to say very good for you, both physically and mentally. Whoops, sorry, hold on, I gotta clean this drip. I have this thing about drips on the rim of a bowl, which I can't explain, but it's pretty serious. But anyway, to summarize, just a magnificent bowl of food. My only complaint was something I mentioned earlier. Okay, while my right hand was extremely happy spooning this stuff into my face, my left hand was like, why am I not holding a piece of bread? Who do I talk to about this? But whether you're dunking bread in this or not, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a principal written recipe and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.